Hello, I'm gonna try to do a little demo of the stringent wall plotter and uh, here is my favorite uh, box to keep my plotter in which is an ice cream box you probably have a lot of those so let's see what we have in it we have uh, one remote control uh, generic DVD player pioneer uh, we have the actual plotter We have uh, one 9 volt battery uh, in the case, that's good. Uh, a generic pen, a uh, whiteboard marker in this case. And actually, not good. So, uh, with these things, we're gonna try to plot something uh, on this uh, wall uh, or paper I, that I put up on the wall. Uh, since I probably will need both my hands, I'm gonna put the phone over here. Ah, so the first thing you want to do is uh, to untangle uh, the strings, which uh, I sloppily have just twisted around here. Uh, so there's one, one string you want to hang uh, on uh, your right side and one string you want to hang on your left side. An you know, important thing is that the, the string on the left side uh, will come from the right wheel and the the right string will come from the left wheel so they will cross uh, at this point which is under where the pin pen will sit so the first thing you do is you take the left wire and you hang it and conveniently i actually have uh, two nails here on on my wall uh, the the right wire we can uh, wait with until later so we'll just uh, plug in the battery uh, which goes here and I put some velcro so you can put it in the back uh, for getting a reasonable uh, center of gravity. It's quite convenient to have a chargeable uh, 9 volt battery otherwise you will deplete them and buy more of them and that the battery is probably the most expensive part in the entire printer. So the first step of calibration is uh, to get the plotter to be 20 centimeters from the point uh, where it's connected here and I have a little marking on the string so I know where it should be and that string is supposed to be where uh, it crosses. So with the remote control uh, I can uh, control uh, how it's moving and when I see that it hits the mark I stop it. And then I have one button for uh, telling the printer that I'm on my left mark. Uh, then I'm going to go over to fastening uh, the right string. And yeah, I had enough string. Uh, and then go from uh, the left side and control uh, the motors. Uh, so I got to the marking uh, on the right string. And you can stop and go a few times because you never get it right the first time you go to the marking uh, currently you can see that this there's some slack in in this string which is not good uh, i need to have this uh, be without slack so i have to just tighten it up so just so that it's under here then i do the the right calibration mark with another button on the remote and now it's actually calibrated and set up. So now we put it uh, to where we want to start to print. Uh, this paper is a bit obnoxious. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so typically uh, you want to print well, obviously between where it's hanging and not too high up uh, because then you get uh, very steep angles uh, and very high tension on the wires. So it works better if you're further down from, from the point. But let's try it here. One thing that's kind of uh, necessary is to have a pen. Uh, and the idea with this is that you could put pretty much any pen. Usually I just uh, take... it. Initially it was made for whiteboard markers as, and then with some ideas of like having rubber bands go around it and the only thing that really works is just put rubber bands and whatever around your pen so so you can force it in so it like sits by itself and then uh, the probably the most tricky part with this is to get the head of the pen to be at the right level from the surface 
because this servo here it pushes uh, the plotter out so it does, the pen doesn't touch in this position so uh, it's a bit of a you try try to put it as close as you can uh, without touching and you probably have to give it a look and see if it's close that's probably not close enough so put it a little closer and then about every time you try this you're gonna make some markings on the wall but, uh, maybe i'm fine so now the plotter is actually set up and ready to plot something that's on the sd card uh, and you can you can choose which plot from the numbers on the remote control uh, and you can also choose how big the plot should be there's like the default size is uh, two-thirds of uh, the distance in between uh, where it's hanging and then you can either make it a little bigger or a little smaller so i'm going to do a little smaller plot so this is going to be a very, very very tiny plot and then i'm going to press the one and see if i succeeded to press all the buttons and we'll see what happens I'm gonna pick up the phone and see we're actually doing some plotting here. And we can have a look at maybe we can see some uh, it's it's hard to see exactly what's going on. So this is uh, this specific plotter we're plotting now is the fourth one I built, which is the most boring plotter of them all because it does not have any blinking LEDs on it, not a single blinking LED. It's uh, actually I, I was very happy when I built it because I had like everything built as a shield for the Arduino, uh, so it's very convenient, but it's super boring to look at. Uh, uh, so I sort of uh, I would probably never ever uh, build one like this if I ever build one. It was more fun having all the all the small blinking LEDs there. And we're getting some plotting here. And it's swinging around a bit, uh, but since uh, the tip of the pen is uh, more or less straight under where the lines are crossing, uh, even if uh, it's uh, wiggling, uh, it doesn't move that much, so the print gets pretty good. Uh, I'm just gonna move this with the remote. Uh, I'm gonna move it, move it away from, from there. So we can see here is a little hello, and the printer seem, still seems happy. Okay, that's uh, how you. St and I can, I can show how you pack it up. It's even easier. Then, uh, well, you can leave the pen in, but since you want the cap on. It's probably easier to just take the stuff here. Now I'm gonna get help from a cat, it seems. Uh, and if I wanna save this from the cat, I'm just gonna take it away from these. And then I usually just put the strings on, one on each side of the servo, and then just twist it up, put it in the box, and it's ready to go. And uh, Cat is not happy because he didn't get anything to play with. Thank you.